everyone, thank you very much for inviting me tonight. Uh, so I want to talk to you all about uh, an initiative uh, that connects people to opportunities. And this is something uh, that, that's happening across the city and it's a, a, a brand new thing called the Cities of Learning. And so I'm really excited to come and talk to you guys tonight about it tonight because we're, we're piloting something that we think is going to be really successful in the city. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you now, I'm, I've come to ask something, I've come to ask a favour, don't worry, it's not money, okay? But I've come to ask for your intelligence, your knowledge and perhaps your support in helping us make it work. So it's one of these things that I think is going to be uh, a really big long term kind of project. But it's involving the idea to connect young people to their, with their talents to skills in your sector. Now we're starting off with the digital sector, because it's the best sector, obviously. Woo. Yay. Uh, but we think, you know, what you guys have got here is a really strong community and, and it's a really great sort of place to start. And it's exciting because we've been selected to do this um, as in, in Plymouth as one of the first UK cities. So it's a really good opportunity for Plymouth to, to get going on this. It's actually uh, a, a US idea. It's been around in the US for about 11 years now. They've, they've created a, a network of learning support that helps young people to, to connect with employers and educators. And, and the idea was to bring it over to the UK and make sure it works here. So that's what we're doing. So no pressure, but Plymouth's got to make it work. Okay, so I think... Um, what I want to talk about a little bit is just kind of go back to sort of basics really. I know that I don't expect you to read that, but that is an example of a learning journey. Now everyone's got a learning journey. We all started somewhere, we all kind of went through little school to middle school to big school. But all along the way we had experiences and kind of things that we did that kind of helped to shape where we are now. And I think some of that is obviously skill, some of that is knowledge, a bit of help from other people, maybe a bit of winging it along the way. Uh, just me then. But I think, you know, there's all sorts of experiences that happen when, you, when you're kind of growing up that form the choices that you make later on. So we think it's important to capture and recognise those, those things that go on. And at the moment, uh, you could argue that that's not happening as well as it could do. Um, it's the, the particular issue, I think, with digital skills in that you know, it does take a long time to craft a qualification to get to a point when you're, that you're an expert of something. Um, with digital skills, it's a little bit different, we think, because it's a fast-moving industry, there's lots, of, you know, there's lots of stuff to learn, there's lots of dynamic changes to things. It kind of doesn't fit into the sort of standard uh, educational model. And we think that's a bit of a problem. Now, we know that kind of schools are doing pretty well at you know, trying to address this and trying to look at digital as a, a relevant topic, as something that they're building into the curriculum. But really, if you ask a lot of young people, which I do, they find, you, know, you find there's a big disconnect between schooling and the stuff they do outside. And that's what we're trying to address, really, is we're trying to capture and recognise some of the skills that young people have in digital and make that more relevant and more current so that they can take that, those, those skills, those competencies, and make them into something that's uh, employable, or, or, or maybe further education. So I'll give you an example. So I met um, a lad recently on a project I was doing, and he uh, got to chatting to him, you know, trying to, trying to be cool. But I said, you know, what games are you into? And he said, oh, you know, I like, play a few games. I make games as well. And I said, oh, that's, that's cool. What games do you make? And he said, oh, I've done stuff on Xbox. I've done stuff on you know, consoles and PC. You know. And I said, OK, he started getting interested. And he said, yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm about to be published somewhere. And I said, right, you, you know, that's amazing. You know, you know, you can make that into a career, really, he said. I said, yeah, of course, you know, that, that people pay you good money for making games. That's a, that's a significant career. And he didn't know that you could make, that could be a job. And I find that a bit shocking in a way that someone, you know, didn't understand that they could, or hadn't been told or advised that they could turn their skills into something that could be, you know, a career for them. So, you know, just one example of how, so I think sometimes young people don't really see the relevance or the significance and the link between what they do and what they could turn it into. Okay, so this, this is a kind of a weird picture of a digital skill sandwich. Anyone for a digital skill sandwich? Now, this kind of, what this demonstrates is the fact that a lot of these skills and competencies and knowledge and behaviours are all kind of out there in the ether. They're a bit messy sometimes, but they, you know, they really are kind of able to be recognised as skills that they can use later on. So 
this is a fairly high level model of what we're trying to achieve. But I think what we're, what we're looking at really are some key kind of behaviours and competencies that we can then address and make into something useful. Now, we've got, we, we use this in schools quite a lot in terms of trying to address where the issues are, what the skills are, and how to, how to make that you know, usable. Um, and it's kind of one of those things where, as digital professionals, you, you know talent when you see it. You can spot when someone's a good graphic designer, or a good coder, or a good market, marketing person. But often, young people just can't do that. And I think that's where we need to kind of break it down a little bit and perhaps be a bit more explicit about some of the skills that they do possess and maybe have an opportunity to say, well, that's worth something. Here, here is something that you can have and show in a, in a different environment. I mean, to look at the way we do it currently, um, if, you, you know, if you're going for a job and you've got a CV and a covering letter or you're sat in an interview and you get asked that lovely question, so tell me about yourself. Or, you know, and you, a lot of people just freeze up, you know, even, even now. And I think this is an opportunity we see as a, as a new way, or a different way, not to replace anything, but to add a layer that allows people to show what they know and just give themselves a richer picture of who they are and what they can do. So, cities are learning. Really, it's about a kind of grass, grassroots, mass engagement movement that, that looks at putting people front and centre to give them the skills and the qualities that they need for jobs and further education. So there's a sort of four stage process to this. this is, we're at the very start of an 18 month pilot here and what we have to do is, is really build a kind of momentum with this and get, get enough people going that we can prove that this works, which is why I'm basically saying the digital community is a bit of a guinea pig for this because I think out of all the sectors in the city, possibly nationwide, digital shows the most kind of potential, I think, for working together. And that's been recognised at a national level, by the way. Plymouth has been sort of seen as one of the key cities for working together, cross-sector, you know, within, within the realms of competition, but also um, collaboratively, collaboratively as well. So the four stages are around kind of badging up the city. That's something I need your help with, and I'll talk a lot, bit about that later on. Uh, and then we don't want to sort of issue these badges, so we have to have people that are going to actually, you know, award them, as would a, a, an organisation or a school. Um, then we've got to have some kind of system for actually presenting what the options are. What do all these things mean? There's no point just handing out these, these badges like they're like sweets and they can be, become a bit tokenistic. We've got to look at how we, you know, deliver this stuff and actually make it, make it relevant. So we're, we're working with companies, Digital Me, to actually create an app that is a lot more sophisticated and can actually look at the gaps and do a lot of the work for us. Again, I'll talk about a little bit of that later on. That ultimately will give us, as a city, I think, a lot more insight into what's happening, what we need, how we shape the future, and really celebrate this, this community that we've got and actually what digital, what's so cool about digital. Because I think we do it quite well, but I think we could do it better. And perhaps we need to do it in a way that engages different people and hopefully starts something that, you know, that carries on for life. So that's the aim, I think, really, is to give people that, that sense of, yeah, I want to get into this, this is cool. I have to say, there are some preconce preconceptions around technology and digital uh, employment. I've spoken to a few people who are still hanging on to the idea that it is just for a certain type of person, and I think we need to you know, help shift that, because we all know we're all varied, wonderful, different people. Okay. So the idea, I won't go into this too much, but this, this tool could be a discovery tool, so it could allow young people to find opportunities, seek them out, see where they are, it could be geolocated, so we know that an activity or an event or some kind of uh, something's going on that they know about, so it adds a discovery tool. We could have lots of organisations getting involved that would actually uh, promote those activities related to digital so they could start to show how their organisation works and how they might want to uh, include people with those skills. We're going to have a skills spine, so that's about creating a, 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 a relatively rigid structure around, around digital and the pathways, and I'll show you that on the next slide. But ultimately this is about destinations and this is about you as employers having the, this, you know, the right talent where you want it and being able to contribute to nurturing that talent. And I think, that's, I think that's important for the city and important for hopefully you guys as well to, to see that you know, these are your future employees potentially and we perhaps need to do a little bit more to help them get to where they need to be. So, 
Individuals can discover, we've talked about that. Learning providers can show their courses or their activities or whatever it might be. This is a system that doesn't really differentiate between what the activity is. The, the way it works is it's, it's, it's up to the individual company or organisation to define what that criteria is. So it's a really flexible system. Employers, they can post opportunities, which is you know, really good in terms of if you've got new, you know, uh, new employment opportunities or you just want to promote your business in a way that reaches more people. And as I say, cities can look at the data and we can be more informed. And from a city council perspective, that's really interesting, I think, because there's been lots of kind of reports around you know, the STEM gap, there's been you know, lots of conversation around whether um, the city is doing the right thing towards helping those disadvantaged uh, young people to really get the opportunities they need. So there's a big gap and it's, and it's known about, but at the moment there seems to be not a huge amount being done about it. So we're going to try and hopefully fill that gap a little bit more. So there's kind of two models of this really. Um, there's a, there's a, a destination driven model. So that's about you have, a, you, you have a, a role or a job that you kind of know that you want to go for and actually that's not as common as, you know, as a lot of people think in terms of what you want to be when you grow up, you know, what's that, that thing you want to be. A lot of people have that vision and that drive, but actually sometimes um, it, it works in a different way. But this, this method gives us the opportunity to pick out the things that people do, perhaps on a day-to-day -day basis, and it could be through volunteering, it could be through caring for a you know, family, it could be going to an actual specific club, it could be un seemingly unrelated activities. But when you start picking out the competencies and the, and the core skills that go along with that, you can group those into some tangible, um, tangible you know, skills and credentials that can be then mapped to an opportunity. And that way it gives visibility, we think, to the way that you can actually um, map it to something that means something. And I think as employers, there's opportunity here to kind of vet a little bit, or you know, it's, it's almost like a recruitment process that could work in terms of having people to to see, you know, see it in insight into what people can actually do. The other method is around interest driven. So again, this is something I think you know, I could really benefit from the, the community helping with uh, around tagging interests. So in a digital sector, we could create a bundle of tags that have interests attached to them. The system would then find those interests and relate them to particular activities and then fill in the gaps afterwards, magic. Now, we have got, this, this isn't all kind of pie in the sky at the moment, because we do have a number of technologies that, that are going to make this work, um, but we do need this human element, we do need people like you, your good selves to be able to advise us and co-design that process to ensure we're getting it right and that we're choosing the right terminology and the right tags, as it were, to make this work. Now, what is recognised? We talked a little bit about kind of core skills. Uh, all sorts of things could be recognised. It could be that you do something that's good and it gets rewarded. So it could be within a school setting, it could be within a community setting, uh, you, know, you could participate in an activity, you could turn up at an event. All sorts of things are badgeable, if you like. So the, the, the loose structure of this makes it really easy for people to kind of badge any kind of activity. But it needs structure. Obviously that's, that's the key bit to this. Okay, so this all, this, all, this all works by the magic of open badges. You may well have heard of this technology. It was a Mozilla technology um, from some years ago. And essentially, it's an image with metadata. But that metadata is really important, we think, because it gives us the opportunity to kind of describe in more detail. It has the benefits of being a very visually, a visual approach. So it, it looks nice on an app or a page when you take it to an employer. Look at all my lovely badges. But underneath, you've got all that metadata. And I think it's really important that there's value and trust that's built into this, otherwise, you know, otherwise it just looks like pretty pictures on the page. So the fact that it contains issuer data, evidence of what the actual, how you actually earn that badge, all sorts of standards can be att attached to it. And now within the version two of Open Badges, they do uh, an endorsement function. So it's possible for multiple companies to endorse the badges that came with it. And we think this can build a real sense of value and trust in, in, the, in the badge system. Um, you know, they've got the benefit of being scalable, trackable, transferable. It's a good format to use. Okay, so 
This is an overview of how the technology might work. And as I say, Digital Me are working hard to build the framework in the background, and they've been very supportive in terms of how they acknowledge that we might need to adapt this for our own use. So they've got an idea that you can pull in other stuff from elsewhere, because we realize this isn't the only idea. There's other things that do this. So it pulls in other qualifications, other badges that you might have earned from other organizations. And then this pathway engine will allow people to manually choose those pathways for people. So if you're someone that works with a young person, you can see the link between things and you can advise that, it will support that but also it will have an AI engine in it that will, will suggest automatically you did that activity, you may like to do this opportunity. So there's kind of both bases covered there and I'm, and I'm told that the API will be fully supportive of ways that we can integrate our applications and other data driven uh, services. So all these people can use, so recruitment, colleges, employers, job centres, they can all use this system as if it were their own and then lovely app at the end to make it all presentable and <coughs> good. Okay, so really quickly, I just want to talk a little bit about how I want to take this forward from today. I'd like, to, we're going to set up a, a workshop in October and I'd like to, for, for you guys to come along and help us to, to make this happen. And we've come up with some kind of overarching sort of digital interests, if you like. Now, the terminology, I'm not sure is going to be applicable to everyone, but in terms of just loosely describing some of the kind of disciplines and, and things that go along with digital, we're making a start and I'm sure you can come up with some better ones for us. Um, I have a vision of Digital Plymouth being at the hub of this, a bit about being able to endorse and maybe even issue digital credentials that support some of these themes. Um, you know, we, we, we recognise the, the diversity, in, not only in the room, but across the city in some of these digital industries. And we think there's opportunity for all of them to work in this way. So again, just at this, at this stage, we're just looking for putting ideas out and to be challenged and maybe come up with something even better. I'll give you an example of how an endorsement might work. So with, within the realms of cybersecurity, uh, we've got a, a very strong cybersecurity kind of initiative in the city. <coughs> and uh, imagine the badge was called Digital Guardian okay, as a working title. I'm sure we can come up with something better than that. But, the idea is that it gets endorsed by sort of, sort of formal learning institutions, i.e. maybe the university or city college, but also it can have layers underneath where there are uh, initiatives or, you know, we've got data play, we've got market hall, we've got, you know, STEM centre, all these organisations and initiatives could help to support and add value to these badges to show other people that they're worth something. It could be in the form of a couple of questions, could be in a challenge or, or you know, it could be anything. So that's for us to, to decide and refine. In terms of accessibility and making sure that everyone can get involved in this, we recognise that young people aren't all the same and they're going to need diff different levels of access. So we, we, we see it as not a levels in the, in the traditional sense, like school, but in a way that you can, if you're just getting into this, you can access something, so you could go to an event and get you know, recognition that you've done that, all the way up to actually you're producing something, you're putting it out there for people to see. So there's lots of layers in this that we can define to make it much more universally uh, accessible, but not necessarily universally attainable. We're, we're quite keen to make sure these aren't just handed out willy-nilly because we think that, that potentially will devalue it. That's our actor map. That's, a, that's a, what we use to kind of define where all the people in the city could contribute to this. It's, it's becoming, it's growing all the time and we think there's huge opportunities for even, you know, <coughs> organisations that aren't strictly digital to get involved and to be part of that, that, this kind of movement. Um, we've got a lot of people that are kind of you know, joining in and, and getting involved. We've got uh, Plymouth College of Art who are helping us with the kind of character side of things, the soft skills, core skills bit, so identifying what those skills might be and allowing us to use their, their framework to, to help providers you know, issue and, and deliver some of this stuff. So we've got, a, and we've got some national people on board as well in terms of Code Club and Team Tech who are keen to run stuff in the city and help, you know, help us to issue some of these, these credentials to make, to make this grow. We've got to start somewhere, we're going to start small, but we'd really like to make this a success. So hopefully we're ready for it. Thank you very much. <laughs>